Hello, and welcome to another edition of Artifact Highlight. In this episode, we will not be looking at a bunch of random Pittsburgh Steelers memorabilia, nor will we be looking at a bunch of random packages of, I don't know, Clark bars or something. No, uh, actually today, we're going to be looking at something actually maybe with some value. So, inside this box here are two items from the Gettysburg Museum of History. The Gettysburg Museum of History is one of my favorite museums in the country at the time. If you ever get a chance to visit Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, it is on Baltimore Street going south down from the center of town. The small museum is free admission as far as uh, the making of this video here. And inside not only is a Civil War collection, but also some very good items pertaining to JFK, pertaining to World War II. They have a particular collection of Dick Winters of Banner Brothers fame. If you ever get a chance to visit the Gettysburg Museum of History, please do so. It is one of the best museums to visit in Gettysburg. Anyways, I have purchased these two items from their website. A good bit of their collection is always on sale, which allows the museum to always have a constant new flux of artifacts, selling the old ones out, using that money to get new artifacts in. So inside this box here, we're going to look at two of these items. So as long as I don't stab myself by doing so. Like every episode always turns into Spencer nearly stabbing himself. The good news is I don't think I'm going to be destroying whatever's in the box. go into the world of packaging peanuts. I assure you there is something in here. <laughs> Let's look over here first. Here you go, there, there's an ad there for the museum, like I said. I got one visa. Well, I haven't been to Gettysburg in a while. I've been there for a few, used to be going every year. And it kind of went to the point where I was going so much that, you know, it's like, oh, look, it's the battlefield. Look, it's a gun. No, that is not where, uh, they filmed the movie Gettysburg. That was filmed on a farm a mile away from the town, I believe. So that'll be a video one of these days. Go to where they filmed the movie Gettysburg. All right, so. Put my gloves on. Makes it look like I'm gonna do a surgery or something. Don't worry. Hopefully I'm not gonna be doing a surgery. Hopefully I don't cut my fingers off. All right. This is extensively packaged. I believe Leave one of the items are in there. And there should be two items actually. They're both similar. And holy crap, it's heavy. Okay, was not expecting it to be that heavy. Well, I'll be able to tell the difference of the items. And is there a certificate in there? I was hoping there would be like a physical certificate to come with it. Oh well. I want to play this packing paper. Move the peanuts away. Oh, I'm looking on the back. Uh, thank you from the curator, Eric Dorr. Well, thank you. I love your museum, Eric. Right. I'm going to save you for later. So, if you can kind of guess, I bought something from Gettysburg, which probably you can probably guess where, what time period we're going to be talking about. That's right. I'm talking about the Civil War. Now, Again, so as long as I don't cut it myself. I have purchased, drum roll, joy to the world. All right. Ah, oh, there's the certificate. This artifact has been certified by the Gettysburg Museum of History. Original Civil War artillery shell piece recovered at Antietam. And a conditionally, unconditionally guarantee the authenticity of this artifact. Eric Gildor. Oh, great. Put my gloves on. We'll be able to get in. And... 
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm about to break into a song. There we go. All right, finally, we got out that open. I'm probably going to cut when I get this item out. So, this is about a two inch long piece of artillery shell from Antietam. Now, as far as I'm aware, I would believe this, since it's in peace, obviously, I believe this to be either part of a piece of case shot or it's part of an exploding shell. Definitely smooth born fired. They were, this was definitely, you could tell, round at one point. This has been the inside, this has been the outside. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I believe this was dug up, not obviously not on the battlefield. Uh, you cannot do digging things. If you're a civilian, you cannot dig anything off of national parks. Uh, if you do so, you will be arrested. So don't do that, viewers. Don't do that at home. So I believe this was recovered some time ago off site. Uh, near, uh, it was near uh, near the National Park Service property. So this is close. Was from recovered from the battlefield. Now, Antietam is very special when it comes to artillery, especially in the Civil War. Antietam was described as an artillery hell. The reason for this is, and if you get a chance to watch my construction paper battlefield series on Antietam, you will see that specifically where the cornfield and the Dunker Church is, it kind of is like a funnel to pull soldiers in. And you have a low rise in hill, I'm probably gonna post a map up here on this section, there's a low rise in hill where the Dunker Church is. That was the, Confeder the primary Confederate artillery position. Now, to the north on the other side of the Miller uh, cornfield, you had the Union artillery position. To the east, on the, across the Antietam Creek, on heights overlooking the creek, you had uh, Union artillery positions. To the west, Across facing them on heights, Nic Nicodemus Heights, Nicodemus Hill would have been further Confederate positions. And he had all of his crossfire going left and right, up and down. This led to it being called an artillery hell. And I actually brought some quotes to add on to this. Uh, Stephen D. Lee, who was a Confederate artillery officer, uh, he had approximately 300 artillery men and were have uh, were in charge of four batteries near the Dunker Church. Out of those 300 men, 86 were killed with 60 horses dead on the field, defending one of the most crucial spots and where he dubbed the term artillery hell. Uh, his sp artillery position was made famous in the Alexander Gardner photo of the Dunker Church with a series of dead corpses near an artillery carriage. Probably shown that right now in the video. And artillery also was the scene of some very particular stories going on, uh, intriguing stories with Antietam. Uh, Israel Richardson, the command, uh, a divisional commander in the Second Corps, was in the process of repositioning an artillery battery, the first U.S. artillery overlooking the sunken road, the center of the Confederate artillery, when he felt wounded, possibly hit with a spent piece of artillery, just like this. And then my favorite story uh, of artillery and uh, Antietam comes from James Longstreet, second in command of the entire Confederate Army, during the flight of the Confederate Center as the Union broke through at the sunken road. What ended up happening was uh, Longstreet, in panic, pretty much gr uh, told his staff officers to get down from their horses and to man this abandoned gun he found south of the sunken road. So here he was holding the reins of the horse of his staff, the second command of the Confederate Army, ordering his staff officers who had no training of this artillery piece trying to fire it. And I guarantee you if uh, Longstreet didn't have his foot in a iron slipper, he had actually heard it uh, earlier in the week, he probably would have been in, in there fighting with him as well. And some quotes as they describe it. The air around us seemed to be alive with shot and shell from the enemy's artillery. The air seemed to be an active volcano belching forth flame and smoke. A converging storm of iron slammed into the batteries from front and flank. Wheels were smashed, men knocked down, horses sent screaming. To stay in the field was to sacrifice units needlessly. It's kind of hard repositioning the shell so you can see it so... This here is a piece of artillery shell from Antietam Battlefield. And this piece here deals with the Civil War again, a little bit later on. It's another artillery shell. I'm not going to leave this. Well, speaking of, if you're wondering what this is, probably my, I probably have the, it in the title of the video. I don't know why I was leaving you guys in suspense. Pro, it's like, oh, geez. I wonder what it means in the video. I don't know what I'm going to call this. Maybe artillery hell. Or who knows? I'll probably call it peanut packaging hell. All right. All right. All right. Come on. Let's get to the piece. All right. Got 
plenty of bubble wrap, but I don't know what to do for it. All right. It's a very big bag. Ah, uh, it's in a divider that's in a bag. Okay. I love how the certificate's in a bag and then this isn't, probably these are already packaged. So, what's more? And it's a seal of authenticity. This artifact has been certified by the Gettysburg Museum of History. Original Civil War large mortar shell piece recovered in Virginia. This, as I read online, was probably near uh, in the, near the vicinity of Richmond or Petersburg from the, the infamous siege of Petersburg, the end of the Civil War. This piece is massive, and this is only a shell, if you can see here. So here is a exploding shell from a mortar. Uh, Petersburg is very, uh, the Richmond area is very famous for one major mortar, the Dictator. Again, photo will be showing up right now. Um, just probably it's not fired by the Dictator, obviously. This is much smaller than the Dictator. What they're using around in Virginia at the time, in 1864, the Civil War goes from being Napoleonic tactics to the birth of siege warfare. And they're lobbing. I can only imagine these shells exploding and it's something this size. I've never actually had to personally hold in the mortar shell this size. Uh, so yeah, these were primarily used by siege weapons uh, in the Virginia area in 1864. The American Civil War, the reason I find it so interesting has to do with the fact in the span of about four to five years, you're gonna see the depth of one popular style of warfare and the birth of another. You start out with the classic lines of battle, Napoleonic warfare, and by but by the end of it, it looks like something out of World War One. And unfortunately, about uh, forty, you know, about 40, 50 years are gonna pass between the American Civil War and World War One. And unfortunately, it looks like lessons weren't learned from it. Now, to be fair, it was a European conflict. Uh, to start out with was an American conflict, so maybe they weren't reading the rule books of what had been written in the American Civil War, but if somebody would have taken a look at the Siege of Petersburg, maybe we would not have had to deal with the year the years of terrible trench warfare that went on in Europe during the First World War. All right, so that concludes this episode of Artifact Highlight. Jeez, that's heavy. I don't know how I'm going to keep that. Oh, this one's nice and tiny. This concludes this episode of Artifact Highlight. Uh, if you want more videos, there is a collection tour that was done by a friend of mine, uh, a humble collector. He posted on his website of my collection tour. If there was anything you saw in my collection you'd like me to talk about, just let me know. Uh, be sure to keep. Uh, be sure to subscribe to Readout Productions. Uh, make sure to hit that bell to keep up to date with all future videos. And we'll see you next time. Try to show.